Slash has finally released his new album, Orgy of the Damned. Uh, <laughs> it's got a fucking fantastic name. Uh, even though it's basically a covers album with lots of really cool guests. You've got freaking Chris Stapleton. Um, I don't know who Tash Neal is, but I'm sure she's famous. And a bunch of other people um, doing covers of some really old, classic, old school rock songs. Um, so the one we've already seen, which had a music video for at least, was Killing Floor, which had Brian Johnson in it. Fantastic. Um, and yeah, Stephen Tyler is popping in and showing he's actually a fantastic harmonica player. Cool. Um, <clears throat> but the album is now out, and Papa was a Rolling Stone with Demi Lovato, and it has now got a full video. So I thought, let's have a little look at this one, because the last one was actually pretty great. And so yeah, this is quite a long video, so without any further ado, so this doesn't end up taking a really long time, let's have a look at Papa was a Rolling Stone. So the original's got a really sparse... Uh, instrumentation, so I'm curious how sort of lots of rock guitar is going to fix that one. Also, the last video was literally just them enjoying themselves in the studio. I'm curious if this one will be any different. The thumbnail was just Slash and Demi Lovato looking happy together. It's such an iconic opening, though. Yeah. I bet you this must have been a fun project for Slash. Please let this video be more than just this, though. The Tony's got this. a bit of flanger, I think. Whoop. There it is. <laughs> Ooh, Tash Neal. Okay. Johnny Griphark. I like this intro. Oh, and David Nevada. I really like it. It's almost like uh, the opening of like a sort of 60s cop drama where they're sort of like, this person playing Mikey the Fingers Jones and stuff like that. And that goes through. I quite I like, I like the, the three different uh, shots of them. I like it. I like the stylistic uh, stuff behind it all. Not have this on the last one. Ooh, bit of synth. Ah, the fucking voc. Is it a vocoder? What's that called? Oh, yeah, it's a deep throat, a pipe, and then it runs your guitar through it. it was nice. Of September. Oh, well, she's taking lead vocals. Interesting. That I guess that makes sense. Yes, I will. She looks like she's concentrating so hard. Okay. She has got a good fucking voice on her, hasn't she? Jesus. So much lead guitar, just like you can tell that all of the instrument people, or instrument the musicians are like fantastically uh, talented, and they're all just sitting there having so much fun messing around underneath that. Oh, just hung her head and said, but yes, this is fun to be in the studio for. <laughs> nice, we're gonna get the vocal lead, uh, vocal or anything. Ah, I get it. It's such a it's such a weird instrument. Like it's really cool. I mean, you know, like Alice in Chains uses it very effectively in various places. But like, it's just such an undignified thing to like record with, just because you have to get like so much of it in your goddamn mouth. Voice box, voice box. Ah, oh, someone will tell me in the comments. I'm sure. Yeah, her voice is really working for this. Got that kind of like powerful soul to it. I don't know why the texture of this song feels a lot thicker than that of the um, of the original. I think it's probably because there's quite a lot more um, like layering going on there. It, it doesn't lose the sort of inherent feeling of the original one, but there's a lot more going on there. I think it's just because obviously Slash is now soloing over the entire thing with the fucking <laughs> with the pipe in his mouth. But it's cool because it does allow his guitar to kind of speak. It mimics some of those vocal lines. Yeah, that synth is definitely not in the original, I don't think. Also, I wish I could dance like some of these guys. Fuck. Is that fucking grab the leg and stick it behind your stuff? I can't do that. She's doing a really good approximation of this kind of blues rock style. Oh, that's a nice, nice there. Uh, Oh, damn. Oh. 
It's a little <laughs> stuff going on in the background. It's it's giving me shivers. Dude, there's so many pedals that pedals in that fucking room. Yeah, there we go. Those, those layered backing vocals are super fucking good. She's got the same headphones on as me, I just noticed. <laughs> so cool. This is funny. That must be that like that is a fucking talent there though from Stash. I mean, to be able like there's so much shit to concentrate on to do a good job of what he's currently doing. He's gotta follow the lead line with his, his guitar, he's gotta be able to sing it, he's gotta be able to make sure that he's not gagging on the fucking thing. Um, you know, play it with like oh, I don't know, it's clever, it's impressive. <laughs> it just, when he takes his gob off it, you realise just how deep it goes. Yeah, there we go. Now it's gonna hit a fucking heavy bit. You go, Slash. And that's why this song is a minute longer than the original, which is already six minutes long. Well, the um, the drums are not a lot more. Uh, drums are a lot more hectic than the original one, and I I think it's just that kind of like organy stuff. It's kind of like picking up the background. It's fine. It's a good thing I think, because you don't want to do a cover and just be the same, right? It's it's like a homage. It's modernized. It's done with Stash's um unique style I guess but it, it's really elevated the song oh. Oh, it's blistering I quite like the stylistic uh, thing with the like three cuts and having the like vaguely interspersed between the different musicians and shots of people dancing and it's cool well done well edited bit of fucking tandem there for the piano and guitar, love that. Ah, oh, they're all such cool motherfuckers as well. God, the magic of the fucking pedals is crazy as well. It's like they've all got their own little like fucking Gundam rigs and they're all sitting there with like, you know, thousands of thousands of pounds worth of technology and pedals. It's kind of like creating this wonderful art. I don't know. It's cool. I like that Slash enabled this, you know? Hey mama, I heard Papa call himself a jack of all trades. Tell me is that was sent Papa to an early grave. Folks say Papa would. I'm trying to figure out whether or not I like her doing the more talky stuff or whether or not that's too... Like, maybe just a little bit low in her register. It definitely still works. But, yeah. She's better when she's flexing, I think, vocal. yeah, vocally. God, those fills are so good. Whoa. Then she gets those fucking chests. Pushing that those out. God, she looks like she is concentrating a lot. <laughs> Don't blame her. Oh, that top note was nuts. Fucking hell, she's got pipes on her. Fucking hell, I'm actually so impressed. My next question, actually, I is this actually recorded live? I just had that thought. Like, they've put a lot of effort into making this look like it's a live one-taker. No, it can't be a one-taker. She's doing harmonies with herself. Now I'm confused. There are definitely shots of them all in the room at the same time. Maybe it's just her doing overdubs. There's enough musicians in there probably to do this all in one hit. Such a thick fucking noise, I love it. 
What the fuck? I mean, she's obviously in a vocal mood, but... That's a fucking note that is. God damn. Oh, you've got to shout out the production on this as well. The fucking quality, everything is absolutely soaring in this mix. That is not normal. How do you hit those notes? I would love to know about the production of this song. Was this a... No. Well, it can't be like a full-on one-taker, obviously, just because there's overdubs, but I don't know whether or not there's much overdub outside of vocally. So I'm wondering whether... Because if that was an actual live endeavor too, then that's even more impressive. I, mean, I don't know everyone there is clearly like the most professional fucking talented musicians that Slash... Slash could get his hands on, but fucking hell. Um, having done a little bit of live recording, logistically, it's so much harder. Like, we had one person fucked up and... I mean, there's ways around it, especially with something like the bass, where I imagine that's probably not being played out loud through an amp. Uh, but as soon as you put a drum kit, a live drum kit in a room, it makes everything else. Anyway, that was extremely fucking impressive. I actually think I like that more than the Killing Floor cover. Her voice is... I mean, I, I know I don't really know anything about Demi Lovato. I, the name is not new to me, obviously, but it's not really my thing. But her voice was incredible in that. I'm not so sure... It, it, the, the sort of lower parts where she was doing the more talkative stuff. I'm not sure whether that was quite comfortably in her range. It, it, that, that was the only flaw in her performance. But even then, it was a very, very, very minor gripe. And what was an extraordinarily uh, impressive homage to what came before. Obviously, Slash's guitar work is fantastic. I love I love the vocoder, whatever the fuck it's called. And uh, just fucking tickling his tonsils while he's playing at the same time. But it works really well. The tone that came out of it is fantastic. The other guys were all consummate professionals. Yeah, that, that bassist was really, really fucking talented too. I like what they did with the um, layering of it compared to the original one because the original song is quite sparse. Like, if you... It, it doesn't really shift in terms... It, I guess it's because it's like really is a classic blues uh, sort of song where everyone kind of takes it in turns to kind of have their step to the forefront but it, the, the actual song itself doesn't layer up all that much this one when it really kicked up it really fucking kicked up which is awesome and a, a nice adaptation you know really i think i possibly would have got bored of eight minutes of that had it not done that but because uh, fucking hell that song's like eight minutes long which i guess makes sense but uh that was fantastic. I'm going to have to check out the rest of this uh, album now. I really like Chris Stapleton. Well, I especially like it when he collaborates with people. So um, I'm going to have to go and have a listen to that track. I don't think it's got a video yet, if it does get one. Uh, Video-wise, it's what it is. It, I, it's stylistically, it's like shot quite well. I do enjoy that almost all of the shots are slasher from below. Don't know if that's on purpose. Um, it was similar to the Killing Floor one. I like the... Um, the sort of like the use of the three um, like kind of screens split out that that was kind of effective. It kind of kept Demi as part of it and in a yeah it was it was for what it was it was decent enough. Whatever random shots of people dancing um, in interspersed that is fine. It happens a lot. It's a bit of a gripe of mine, but it was sparing enough on this one that it didn't piss me off. But um, yeah, anyway that was fantastic. Um, in the comments, first off, someone let me know if I got that right, if that's what the tube in uh, his mouth is called. I remember studying it at some point, but I've forgotten what it's called. It's, like, it's not a vocoder, I think, but it's like a voice box or a... Someone tell me. Uh, and also, what's your favourite track off this new album? Is there other ones I should be having a look at? Is the Chris Stapleton one as good as I hope it is? Uh, yeah, anyway, apart from that, like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much for watching the video. Have a lovely day, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.